The other day, your boy was on the blocks playing that football fusion to Francisco as one will. And us being the scholars we are, we were discussing TI-84 calculators. The interesting thing about TI-84 calculators we realized is we couldn't think of any other graphing calculators to the same degree, to the same caliber as the TI-84 is. For people who don't know, these calculators are expensive, $80, from $100 for a calculator. And I thought, if there's no other calculator like the TI-84, and the TI-84 prices are through the roof. This sounds a lot like a... Welcome to the Investors me. Trading Academy what talking glossary of financial terms and events. Our word of the day more. is Monopoly. <laughs> But hold on a second, is there alternatives to the TI-84? Turns out there is. If you do a little digging, you can get the Casio FX9750GII. And it basically does all the same stuff and apparently does the stuff faster than the TI does. But to be honest, when is the last time you've seen someone fire up that Casio FX9750GII? When is the last time you've seen a Casio FX9750GII in a classroom? But more importantly, when is the last time you've seen a Casio on the school supply list? You would think schools would rather buy the Casio FX9750 over the TI-84s, and you would probably assume schools would rather require you to purchase them over the TI-84s to save money. So why do schools prefer them? Well, the answer is simple. Consistency. TI-84 has generally been with schools longer and thus, when teachers teach students with calculators, they expect you to have the same type with the same settings. So this begs the question, how did it get to this point in the first place? Well, to answer that, we have to go back to 1985. In a small little unknown country, some of you might like have heard of, maybe. It's called Japan. <laughs> Casio manufactured and sold the first graphing calculator known as the Casio FX7000G. A year later, it was available to purchase in the US. At the time, Texas Instruments was already a significant player in the American calculator market. Why, if I'm calculating? Is it dark in there? Not for my new Anylite Solar Calculator from Texas Instruments. You have a Texas Instrument? Texas! Texas Instruments Anylite Calculator. Unlike other solar calculators, it works in almost... Anylite. Good and feel. The new line of Anylite Solar Calculators from Texas Instruments. Imagine the Prince of Darkness with a solar calculator. <laughs> They had introduced various scientific and programmable calculators, but they still haven't produced their own line of expensive calculator bricks. Well, on the topic of expensive calculator bricks, it is important to note that the Casio FX7000G surprisingly wasn't cheap at the time, costing $75. With inflation today, that would be $204.72. Talk about an expensive calculator with no visible competitors in its field. So when Texas Instruments five years later came out with their own graphing calculator, the TI-81, for about $100. You can already probably assume what the average consumer trusted dumping their rent into. Texas. With the introduction of graphing calculators, didn't mean the introduction of graphing calculators in schools exactly. There are still old heads who are hesitant to change their teaching methods and incorporate this new technology. Moreover, the cost of graphing calculators, as discussed earlier, could be a barrier to widespread adoption. Schools needed to invest in these devices, and not all students and families could afford to purchase them independently. The adoption of graphing calculators in education was a gradual process that required time for educators to understand their benefits and incorporate them into their teaching practices and curriculum. So when that time eventually came, guess what American schools trusted more? Texas. So for years, Texas Instruments has been able to have this grasp over the calculator industry merely by the fact of their reputation. But this still doesn't answer the question, why in 2023 are we still forking over 30 to 100 dollars for the same calculators that have been in commission since 2004. Regardless of the argument of which old piece of junk is cheaper, why are we still buying old pieces of junk in the first place? Because they're stupid. Because they're stupid. You would think at this point a new company would have produced new and approved calculators that contain way more functions and capabilities than TI and Casio calculators combined for a way more affordable price. But alas, we find ourselves in a peculiar situation. The continued use of outdated calculators is a prime example of how certain industries and products can resist innovation and change, such as Apple releasing the same phone every year. It's worth acknowledging the sheer power of familiarity. People, especially educators and students, are already accustomed 
custom to the interface functionality of the older models. They know how to navigate them efficiently, which is crucial in a classroom or exam setting. Introducing entirely new calculators with advanced features might disrupt the learning curve and create resistance among users who prefer the comfort of the familiar calculator. Additionally, cost considerations remain a major issue. Developing a new technologically advanced calculator would most likely involve research and development, production costs, and initial marketing efforts. This in turn could lead to a higher upfront prices for these devices anyway, so people might be reluctant to invest in a new improved expensive calculator, especially if they believe the old ones still get the job done, albeit at a higher cost. However, the key to breaking this cycle is innovation. If a forward-thinking company were to develop affordable, feature-rich calculator that addresses the needs of modern education and beyond, it could disrupt the market. Such a calculator would need to strike the right balance between familiarity and new features, ensuring that educators and students can adapt easily while enjoying the benefits of advanced functionality. So in conclusion, while it's frustrating to see outdated calculators still in use in 2023, there are complex reasons for their persistence, but this shouldn't discourage us from advocating for change and progress. As technology continues to advance, it's only a matter of time before innovation catches up with the world of calculators, providing better and more affordable options for students and professionals alike. Next us.